Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning into my channel. Today I'm going to be chatting about something that I get tons of questions on all the time and I love talking about it, um, though I don't really like doing it. <laughs> and that is PhDing. I posted on Instagram and asked people to let me know whatever questions they had about a PhD. I got a lot of questions. I've tried to consolidate them and group them into segments. So hopefully this video will make sense and hopefully it answers any question you might possibly have. If it doesn't answer a question that you might have, please feel free to ask a question down below in the comments and I will do my very best to get back to you ASAP but also someone who might be watching this video might also have some feedback for you. I have a couple of other videos about the PhD process in a playlist so if you want to go see them just check right over here. And if this is your first time here please subscribe to my channel if you find this video useful at all at any point. Definitely give it a thumbs up and if you know someone who's interested in a PhD share this video with them. I'm all about sharing knowledge but I can't do that by myself so you got to help me do it. Alright, so the first question that I often get is what is my PhD in and kind of how did I get here? So I am currently, as of this video, I'm in year six of a PhD program at Columbia University. I'm in the Department of Sociomedical Sciences and my program is a joint program between the History Department at the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences and the School of Public Health. My field is History and Ethics of Public Health. And I'm writing my dissertation on the rise of asthma in Black urban America. It's now three to four times more prevalent in African Americans than it is in whites and how political and social and environmental changes kind of cause the asthma disparity. So that's my project. How did I get here? I went to Harvard for undergrad. I'm an immigrant kid so like I don't know that I just ended up there. I majored in history of science in undergrad with a minor in global health and health policy. And I had also done a summer program while I was in college called Leadership Alliance which is for underrepresented minorities who are interested and in getting into academia and so we had a summer research project and we had mentors who were in graduate school kind of talk to us about PhDs and one of the mentors in that program told me something that I held on to. She told me that if you know that you want to get a master's but you might also want to get a PhD just apply straight into the PhD because most PhDs are funded and I'll get a little bit into that later so if you can get a free master's degree on the way to your PhD why not do that so that was really the only reason I applied my senior year of college I was like okay I might want a PhD at some point I'm still interested in this topic my advisor said I should do it this lady said I should do it so I just did it like that was my only reason for applying so it's enough about me and my topic and my research a question that I got a lot is should you get a PhD how do you know if a PhD is right for you I think getting a PhD is really an individual choice it is a really big commitment in terms of time and also like energy. So I think there's like three things that go into whether or not you should do a PhD that I wish I had kind of figured out before I started. So one, you need to be passionate about a specific research topic. So if there's something that's been gnawing on your heart, on your mind, you just feel like no one is talking about it correctly, no one is really doing anything, no one's really researching it in the right way, then you have your research topic, you have that passion that you're interested in. The next thing is to have an environment where you can cultivate and um, develop that research and so it's important to find a program and or an advisor that you feel like you could really grow under and learn under that would be a good fit for you and the third thing is to have the mental mindset <laughs> so PhDs are incredibly long they take anywhere from three to, to 50 years. I mean, I guess theoretically you probably get kicked out after year 10. They're a large um, investment in like your lifespan. So you do kind of have to be ready to commit that much time to it. So another question is, do you need a PhD? I mean, does anyone need anything? But I think that one way to figure out whether you need a PhD is to find three people who are doing what you want to do with your life. It's tough if you don't know what you want to do with your life, as I don't really know what I want to do with my life. But at the moment, find three people who you love the work they're doing and you aspire to be like them. Do those people have PhDs? 
If they do, then it's a good chance that you need a PhD. If they don't have PhDs, then it's possible that you can get to where they are without needing a PhD. So that's something that I would consider, especially for people who are still in college. I have a separate video about whether you should go into a PhD program straight out of college. You should definitely check out. If you're kind of thinking like, oh, well, I just finished grad school, and like maybe I don't really know what to do next. So like maybe I'll apply to a PhD program or I just finished undergrad. Like that's not a reason to apply to a PhD program. Like if you feel like, oh, I don't want to get a job, so I should do a PhD program because it's paid you will be absolutely miserable in terms of a PhD versus a DRPH um, I got a couple of questions about this because I'm in the field of public health to be honest in my program I don't really see a difference in the educational aspect of a DRPH versus a PhD DRPH students in my department don't have to pick a track so they have a bit more freedom to take whatever classes that you want I think DRPHs are framed as a more applied and practical degree but again in my department like there are people who have graduated with DRPHs and gone into academic jobs and people who have graduated with PhDs have gone into non-academic jobs so I don't really see the difference in my program it might be different across other programs but for us there's no real difference. Okay. So the next big question is how do you get into a PhD program? I already have made a video about how to apply to a PhD program. I feel like it's pretty comprehensive and it takes you through all the steps of all you need to do before, during, and after the application process. So definitely watch that if you haven't already. And that video also answers questions like how do you find the right program? How do you find a funded program? And I think it really boils down to researching one amongst faculty and also researching the students. Ask students at programs you want to go to all these nitty-gritty questions. Programs are all really unique and different so the best way to find an answer to a PhD related question in your field and in your program is to ask a student at the school that you're interested in. You don't have to have a master's degree to get a PhD. Again I went straight in from undergrad so I got my master's degree along the way. There are some programs that require you to have a master's degree beforehand so you know just again you'll know that once you like start researching different programs. Another thing you can do is look up the student profiles and see if students already had master's degrees before starting the program that will give you a good sense of whether the program tends to admit people without MAs or whether they are more flexible and admit people without MAs. I don't think that the GRE matters for PhD programs nearly as much as it does maybe for other graduate programs. I think that you just want to be far above average in one of the higher percentiles. If you're applying to a STEM program, you definitely want to be in the 90th percentile. For the math section of the GRE, if you're applying to humanities or social sciences, you want to score really well on the verbal section. But ultimately, I think what they're looking for in your application, and again, a lot of this is in the how to apply video, what they're looking at is your essay and your personal statement like that is the crux of your PhD application so devote as much time as possible on that okay let's talk about money funding and finances huge 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 topic who so I personally don't think that anyone should get a PhD especially any underrepresented person minority woman etc I don't believe you should get a PhD unless it's fully funded if you're rich or you've been working and you have a lot of money feel free but the amount of work that goes into a PhD program and the expectations of the department you need to be paid for so most PhDs are funded as in they'll pay your tuition they'll also give you a stipend and there are some people in my program who are not funded like I don't understand how they're living it's not a life that I want anything to do with so definitely try to secure funding once you're admitted into a program like before signing any Thing. try to meet with the program administrator or a potential advisor and just ask them what the funding situation typically is for the program it's always good to negotiate another school that I was accepted into gave me five years and so I was able to be like hey I really want to come I need five years of funding because they're giving me five years of funding and so leverage different funding opportunities that you have you'll definitely be expected to apply for outside fellowships so it's always a good idea to start looking at those early on in the program and one of my colleagues sent me a list of all the fellowships that were relevant for people studying history of public health you feel free to reach out to other people who are studying something similar and ask them what fellowships they have seen your school and your program should also have a list of like fellowship opportunities both internal and external that you might qualify for so before you start I think current students are actually the most valuable resource that you have in a program try to find the contact information for a couple of current students in the programs that you're interested in and ask them like the hard questions about funding and finance. Personally, how did I survive in New York City in my PhD program with my stipend? For full disclosure, I think my stipend the first two years, 30,000 
dollars. I graduated college without any student loans, thank God. So I had roommates for the first two years. Part of my fellowship was that I would have to work 20 hours a week as a research assistant. So I did that and that's how I paid my bills and how I survived. I didn't go out a lot. I tried to live a like, pretty like, well-budgeted life. In year three, I actually won an external fellowship, so I no longer had to work for anyone at the school, which was amazing. I highly suggest you trying to secure external fellowships because it will help free up your time. I also wanted to move out on my own, so I actually don't know if I was supposed to do this, but I did get a part-time job so I could afford to live by myself in New York. So another question that has come up a lot is like, can you work while also being a PhD program? I think for one, it is expected of you to work for the school at least in some capacity whether as a research assistant or as a teaching assistant you should have in your mind that you're not just taking classes you're probably also working for the school but for yourself if you have time and if you need to there are people who work other jobs outside of school and who make it work for me I needed something else to do outside of school and I needed additional income I was working 15 to 18 hours part-time I think it's harder to work in your, your early years when you're taking classes but as your classes start tapering off and you're preparing for exams working on a paper you might have some time to pick up another job all right another huge question that I get a lot is about work-life balance like how do I live outside of a PhD I have this blog I make YouTube videos every once in a while I'm married I be cooking I work out like I go to church I sing in church my friend George said this the other day that it's not about balance you can never balance everything, but everything needs to be in harmony with one another. And I really, really love that. Some advice that I got early on is to treat your PhD like a job. It is a job, you're working, you are researching, you are writing, you are teaching, you're working. So treat it like a job, devote a certain amount of time a week to it. If you need to treat it like a nine to five or eight to four or eight to six, like whatever you wanna do, however you wanna break up the hours, like set a certain amount of time per week towards it and devote that much time to it and nothing else. Whatever time you allow for it, like it will take up. Okay, so I literally just changed my outfit as I was waiting for my battery pack to recharge. I'm gonna finish up this section. I'll record the rest of it tomorrow. So set boundaries with your time, but also with your outside life. Your friend should respect the fact that you're now in a PhD program once you start, and so you can't go to brunch every weekend. You you can't stay up late. You, there are just some things that you might not be able to do. So also create some boundaries with your friends and family. It's gonna differ across programs, but most people take around four to five classes their first year or so, and then as they move into more teaching and research assistantships, they might take fewer courses. So your need for time management will change as your time changes over the years in your program and as your requirements change. So whether or not you need to be spending most of your time in classes or whether you need to be spending most of your time doing research, that'll also affect like your ability to manage your time. Also, like the time that it'll take you to finish your program really depends. So some programs, the norm is to finish in four years and five years. In some programs, it's very normal normal to finish in eight years. So it really just depends. I would say find out from, again, the people in the programs you're interested in, how long people typically take to finish. And it also might depend on what stage of life you're in. You might be able to finish faster if you're single without any kids, and it might take you a bit longer to finish if you have a family. But as long as you're continuously working towards it and you're still passionate about it and your program is allowing you to stay, I don't think that you should get worked up about how long you're spending in the program. So that's it for part one. Thanks so much guys for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.